I'm just going to start off with um, I'm just going to start off with a bit of fan mail I got. You're going to have to click view story because believe it or not, that isn't my story. So I didn't post the story saying view is lotuseaters.com. So you'll have to what? You'll have to pause this. Oh wait, this isn't this isn't the right thing. No, you need to skip to the one that I actually sent the link to. So so just click through, click through, click through. This is other fan mail I got. Uh, <laughs> click through. It's very professional. Right? Click through. Oh, this is it. Right. So pause it or it'll move. So this is basically, I got engaged uh, and I said, I put a ring on it, which is obviously referencing Beyonce because I'm, I'm a big proponent of music of black origin. And uh, I got all these replies from all these angry wokers be like, it, you're objectifying a woman. Yeah, I'm objectifying a woman. You know what I mean? Obviously, that's what I like doing because I'm a man with a dick. But like, uh, she says, it, I'd be running away fast. And uh, I replied saying, you don't look like you can run very fast. Because she's fat and old, uh, and the next, the next one uh, should be Fat Keith from the Office. If we click through one more, uh, next one, next one, uh, this one, this one. So basically, you remember uh, the Office, the British one with Ricky Gervais? No. All right, because yeah, you're 19 years old. But um, if if you were born before, <laughs> if you're born in the 80s, I've got time for you, and you will have seen uh, the Office featuring Ricky Gervais. So this guy, you and Macintosh, played the fat. What, am I allowed to swear? No. Okay. Well, the fat guy on the office you. who eats a eats a <laughs> Scotch egg. Uh, so uh, he he posted on Facebook currently on GB News. Dominic Frisbee and Leo Kears, a more objectionable pair of CUNTs. You would be extremely hard pushed to find. And uh, I, don't, I don't know why, but I just posted. I'm delighted to be living rent free in the head of the fat CUNT from the office who eats a Scotch egg. Uh, so that is. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why these people have a boner for me. But um, that was. Uh, I love how he's hate watching you. I love, yeah, hate watching me, and also uh, like contributing to G GB News's advertising revenue, and uh, also like man, like what you you've you had one acting job in twenty five years, and it was eating a Scotch egg, and you just lucked out that you did it sitting near somebody who's talented. Uh, so shut up, get back in your box, except you won't fit in it because you're too fat. Anyway, moving on to what I'm actually going to be talking about. Uh, so the government's got like a conversion therapy bill uh, coming through. It's already. Uh, it's already uh, come, come through in Canada. Uh, I should probably explain, if you don't know what conversion therapy is, historically it's been, uh, you know, um, homosexuality was viewed as a mental illness which required curing. Uh, so the, the actual guidebook, the handbook for psychiatrists, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, uh, listed same-sex attraction as a mental disorder until 1973. So this is, you know, relatively, uh, that's like 50 years ago, relatively recent that, you know, this was... It is recent. It is recent. I, I understand, but I just, I remind To me, um, it's recent. I got told a story about uh, when I think it was Norway decriminalized homosexuality or whatever. And then they, there was some group that took out adverts trying to have, make sure that people knew it wasn't a disease. And they had some guy call up the office and go, oh, I'm really sorry, mate. I can't come in. Feeling a bit gay. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got time off sick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, and like, yeah, it was, it was horrific. Uh, the conversion therapy in the past, uh, a lot of it was driven by, you know, the religious right and the, the techniques used to try and change someone's sexual orientation were straight out of a clockwork orange. The electric shocks administered to people while showing them homoerotic images, which to be honest, I'm not sure if that would make you more or less gay. Um, that, that happened to um, Lou Reed, singer of the Velvet Underground, um, they had uh, chemical castration, even lobotomy, like they'd use wires to chop up people's brains. Uh, and this wasn't in the 1800s, it wasn't in Saudi Arabia, this was happening in the West as recently as 1969. I mean, Alan so, Turing being a very famous one. Exactly, so Alan Turing giving chemical castration to, you know, and he, he took that, because uh, the, the other option was, was a prison sentence, like insane. And like a man who helped Britain win the war, absolutely insane. Um, so you can understand why you know the people would want that banned. Um, the problem with the the bill as it stands now is it's also uh, covering uh, trans transitioning. Uh, so it's it it means it'll be illegal to sort of uh, have therapy that that guides people away from transitioning, from gender affirmation, surgery, or or right. or whatever. Because I mean, just to clarify, we don't do any of that stuff anymore. 
In oh yeah, I mean, there's no, there's nobody's getting electric shock treatment. Like maybe if you go to um, there's a club down the road. <laughs> yeah, maybe, I mean, yeah, people are probably getting it done for fun, but like nobody's, nobody's, you know, this, this isn't a common problem in the UK at the moment. Um, statistics show, uh, like a survey of uh, gay and lesbian people said that just five percent of them had been offered uh, gender conversion therapy, and uh, it's more. Today is more, I mean, it's obviously a lot milder. Nobody's getting lobotomy, being offered lobotomies, but it's um, a religious thing. So, you know, if you're from a, you know, a hardcore religious community, um, they'll pray, offer- Pray the gay away. Yeah, they'll offer. My, my friend Stephen was, was offering, like, I've got, got a mate who's uh, like totally gay, like super gay, wears a bow tie and stuff, you know, like- Well, that's well, a political statement now, loves, super gay. Loves dicks in his face. And like, so when, when he was 14, his parents, these hardcore Scottish Catholics, oh man, Scottish Catholics could give the Taliban a run for their money. So they could see that he was gay. His parents could see that he was gay. So they sent him to this religious straightening out camp in America where religious dudes get you to pray the gay away. But I don't think they really thought this system through. Because if you get 200 gay teenage boys together at a camp, like overseen by priests, there's not going to be less anal sex going on at that camp. You know as, what I mean? As we know, all male boarding schools. Nothing goes yeah, on. Yeah, nothing, nothing goes on. So like, I don't think they really thought this system through. But then I realized it's like when your dad catches you smoking a cigarette and then he makes you smoke the whole pack. Like these, <laughs> these kids are going to come back from the camp with arseholes like a car crash. They are never going to look at a dick again. So maybe, maybe that's how the conversion therapy works these days. I don't know. Uh, so anyway, the, the conversion oh, therapy ban... <laughs> The conversion therapy ban is already passed in Canada. Um, so bill number C4, uh, I don't know why they named it after plastic explosive, um, to ban conversion therapy. No one should be tortured under the false pretense that a person's sexual orientation, gender identity, and gender, gender expression can and should be changed. But um, actually, those things can change. <laughs> if we move on to the next one, uh, you know it's a bad idea because uh, the... the um, uh, if we move on, this is still like Canada, um, just uh, saying that they went through with it. But you know it's a bad idea because uh, Justin Trudeau uh, has tweeted yeah. saying it's a good idea. Um, and there's a lot of support for the bill. If we move on to the next tweet. Um, so this is uh, what the trans, a trans rights activist. Uh, so if you're, if you're um, against trans people being protected from conversion therapy, uh, you're basically pro-torture of trans people at this point. That's where you are now. But bear in mind, uh, so what they class as gender conversion therapy isn't the same as what was classically classed as gender conversion therapy. So they're, they're not talking about uh, electric shock treatment or you know the religious uh, demonizing or telling people it's a sin. They're, they're talking about um, offering therapy to, to transgender people, um, transgender children who quite often uh, gender dysmorphia is mixed in with a with a lot of uh, mental health conditions, uh, anxiety, autism, and all uh, you know dissociative disorder. So um, any sort of uh, any sort of treatment, any talking therapy that would uh, you know help help with with those conditions and maybe you know end up with a person not transitioning uh, would be seen as torture even though the actual transitioning involves a lot of you know drugs and hormones and surgery that you know could be but, regretted but later a chat. yeah having having a chat basically so yeah so if but we, having a chat torture the surgery the hormone and uh, not yeah so it's, it's weird it's, it's a strange way of looking at it and, uh, violence. and obviously you know the trans rights activists are uh, supporting it so we we'll move move on to the next tab um, they are obviously uh, with their male pattern baldness. I mean, sorry, female pattern baldness because they're real women. Um, they are coming out with all the violent fantasies. So kill Bill, but with the trans woman who goes back. I shouldn't use such a high pitched voice. Kill Bill, but with the trans woman who goes back to conversion therapy camp to rescue her friends and murder the fuck out of her abusers. Ugh, I'm a real woman. <laughs> Suck my dick. All right. And we move on to the next tab. <laughs> what is that accent? I don't know. Stonewall. Uh, Stonewall have said that um, you know all these countries have uh, a full or partial ban on conversion therapy, and Britain is the only one that doesn't because Britain's bad. Albania. So, Come off it. So, um, yeah, Brazil. I mean... Well, Albania is a Muslim country. I don't buy it. Is, is it? Yeah. Right. Um, is it? Yeah. Isn't it in Eastern Europe? No, it's in the Balkans, just above the Greece. Isn't that Eastern Europe? Is it, is it Not Muslim? Not really. Right. It's, it's basically a holdover from the, the Ottomans. From right. Like, in my understanding. Like, the, the cultural integration is to a point that it's... Right, right. I don't recognise any of those flags apart from America and Australia. Uh. 
But um, yeah, so if we if we move on to the next tab, um, so there's some criticism. Uh, so the the government's proposals, as I said, would ban conversion therapy for sexuality, but also stop doctors exploring options other than gender confirmation treatment. So, you know, hormones, uh, surgery and all the rest of it for, for children that uh, question their, their gender identity. Uh, if we move on to the next one, there's more criticism from Kathleen Stock. So, you know, this is, this is raising the points that, you know, what even it, like sexuality is quite clearly defined. So it's attraction to someone who's the same sex as you, the same, you know, biological sex, uh, usually. That's why it's called uh, sexuality, not genderality. Um, so that's clearly defined and it's easily reversible. If, if you decide you don't want to be gay anymore, you just start, like, licking vag and yeah. girls... Assholes I mean, if you're five cocks of... down and you think, actually, you know, I'm, I'm not enjoying this anymore. Yeah. And um, what have I done? Yeah. Then, well, yeah, that's pretty simple. Which, maybe, maybe you're not gay. Maybe you're just a bit... Which does know, happen. Hype. Sometimes people, you know, start off bisexual, end up, you know, gay or end up straight. You know, it's sexuality, you know, even though a, a lot of the times it, it stays as a, you know, a constant, you know, it, it can change. But it's, there's no detransitioning when you change when you you know change your sexuality you don't need to like get your breast implants well, you gotta get all the furniture changed it's just yeah you gotta change <laughs> <laughs> you gotta my problem can't look this good you gotta change your tv viewing habits you know yeah. you can't do this anymore like uh, uh, uh. but i mean apart from that it's pretty easy to to go back so uh, kathleen stock who of course was the a professor at university of sussex who was bullied out of her position for uh, questioning trans ideology uh she's you know raised the point that feelings can be temporary so um, gender identity is, is much more nebulous, uh, diaphanous than, than sexuality. Um, and acting on feelings of gender identity involves drastic bodily changes, the, the surgery, the hormones, and some regret the changes later. So if we move on... I've just got this question in my mind. So you know how they refer to the surgery of, of getting chopped off or whatever? They refer to that as gender confirmation surgery? Or it's affirmation, like, why, yeah. Yeah, why, why can't I refer to, you know, sexuality affirmation therapy for all the stuff where they were like, yeah, I'll pray the gay away. Um, I mean, they must be in a, a, I mean, that's the that's the problem here. It's like, well, how is one valid and not the other, surely? Yeah, yeah. Like, um, yeah, but I mean, I think <clears throat> sexuality, like je se sexual conversion therapy has been pretty much proven to always be horrible and never work. Pseudoscience. So it's, it's, it's pseudoscience and it's it's horrible. It's torture for, for people. So it is, you know, it's a horrible thing. It should be banned. Um, what if it's voluntary? Uh, well, even then, like people can be, it's like euth it's like euthanasia. It's like how voluntary is it? Are people being know, like, I, bullied, coerced into I, it? Immediately, is coming to mind is Milo, of course, who who is just like, actually, I'm not gay anymore, and he wants to go around. Man, that guy just wants to be famous. <laughs> He's just, you know, it is weird. Yeah, but like if, we all want to be famous. But, but if like, I, I, why well, we could do the reverse? I mean, if I, I'm a, I'm a grown adult and I wanted to go to therapy and become gay, yeah. I mean, why should I not be able to pay the money to have the therapy? I don't think you need the therapy. Just, just <laughs> suck a dick. <laughs> but I, I'm not feeling it, so I'm gonna oh, go right. do the therapy. But you really want to get a job with the Guardian. But that, should that be bad? So. <laughs> my, my pursuits into. Left wing politics. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like you know, I can see people uh, people doing that to get. I mean, um, well, the, famously, um, Hollywood actors have, have done that. You know, and, and there's porn stars exists. do the gay got, for pay thing. You've got all the Christians who are like, yeah, I can I can therapy you and you won't be gay anymore. Yeah. Where are the ones who are like, yeah, I can therapy you and make you gay? Yeah. I mean, where is that? <laughs> <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder if it does exist. Yeah. Well, it might. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I mean, looking at you know, there, there's been been a lot of uh, articles about this. So I mean, we've got to really look at you know what is gender identity because I mean, could you could you define what gender identity is? I mean, there are a million debates on it, isn't there? Yeah. So yeah, no. Um, so sexual orientation is well defined, well understood. Um, but gender identity is, you know, as I said, it's quite nebulous. Mm. Um, so the hu human rights campaign defines it as one's innermost concept of self as male, female, a blend of both or neither. So what on earth does that mean? This is why I didn't nobody, rent nobody knows. <laughs> so it's not simply and clearly defined or objectively measurable. So homosexuality is measurable by you sucking a dick. You know what I mean? Um, your gender. What if it's a woman's dick? Then that's a complicated. <laughs> then that's straight. <laughs> I think that means that's still straight right. under current uh, woke laws, because okay. um, that's a, a female penis. Which I, I totally understand. If transgender women want to keep the penis, because apparently if you get it uh, removed, there's, there's a one in three or one in four chance you'll never orgasm again. Mm. So yeah, keep the dick. Um, but 
the other issue with it is that sexual orientation is easy to change. You just date men instead of women. Uh, changing gender can be damaging and it's also difficult to reverse. So you go through all the, the drugs, the hormones, the delayed puberty and the surgery. Uh, so, um, so the Economist in, in this report, they report that um, trans identity can be, can be influenced by many factors. So clinics and psychologists report that many trans identified patients also suffer from depression and anxiety. Some have had abusive childhoods, many are gay or lesbian, and maybe confusing their emerging sexuality with a cross sex identity. I mean, this is why so many gays and lesbians feel that they're, they're being erased. So, you know, you've got butch lesbians who feel that the, the new generation of butch lesbians are, you know, being told that they're, they're male and they have to transition or being guided towards, you know, that, that that funnel that's taken everybody through transitioning. I almost want to call it a gay genocide. <laughs> like, well, there are right, no I new mean, gays. <laughs> you, you like throwing the word genocide around. Where, I mean, the, the Chinese Communist Party does a, a sterling job and uh, doesn't commit any genocide. Um, <laughs> thank you for the donation, Xi Jinping. Um, so a few a few um, children who present as as uh, with gender dysmorphia uh, seem to have homophobic parents for whom the idea of having a straight uh, trans daughter is preferable to having a gay son. And this is actually government policy in, in Iran. Yes. So in Iran, being gay is illegal, but the, the government, uh, you know, funnels you into uh, transitioning so that being a, <laughs> you're, you're a woman and then it's not gay. I mean, the horror stories are you're a man, you're kidnapped, you're raped, and then the government finds out that you were raped. And while well, you had gay sex, they'll put you to death or you can transition. Transition. Mm, like, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And all you did was, you know, be a victim. Um, so, yeah, stuff like that is horrific. And crucially, between 60 and 90% of children identified as trans eventually seem to reconcile themselves to their biological sex. So, these feelings of, of gender dysmorphia tend to sort of fade out by, by adolescence, which is it's you, common sense. You, you can I mean? pray the trans away, but not the gay. <laughs> well, no, it's not praying. It's, it's when your hormones kick in yeah. and stuff like that. And obviously, you know, even then in your teenage years, you know, the things are, you know, topsy-turvy, you're going through a lot of changes and stuff. So, um, so children seem to, you know, generally tend to reconcile themselves to their biological sex as long as their cross-sex identity is not uncritically affirmed. That's got far too many double negatives in it for me to know what they're talking about. Uh, so basically, The Economist is saying that, that talking to patients about their feelings should not be illegal. And that's what this bill <laughs> would do. Talking <laughs> therapy makes good sense. We move on to the next one. Um, this is uh, this is more criticism, so more crap conversion therapy science. If you imagine the government's proposed conversion therapy ban is based on authoritative evidence, you'd be wrong. You can tell because the team behind it are now churning out self-justifying rubbish like this. And this is this is interesting because there isn't enough data uh, around this because people are scared to research it. You saw what happened to Kathleen Stock. You know she gets she gets bullied out of her position as a professor. Uh, they're, afraid, it, they're afraid of the answer because if the answer isn't the politically correct one, their yeah. career is over. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And the next tab, um, so, uh, I mean, this is this is interesting. This is um, uh, somebody, you know, a, a feminist, so somebody that would be deemed a trans-exclusionary radical feminist, uh, saying that this, this sort of move towards transitioning every, as many people as possible is gonna end fairness in women's sports. Um, which, I mean, women's sports are always already at a disadvantage because they're so rubbish. Um, it's like my mate was saying, oh, the, the uh, England women's team, what was he saying? The England, win, England women's team did, did really well, did better than the men's, uh, men's team in the World Cup or something like that. Okay, then they can I'm play like, each other. I'm like, yeah, they're playing women. Like, obviously mm. they're going to, like, it's not fair. They're playing women. Do you know it's going to be much easier. I can't anyway. uh, you know what we'll get into it. My uh, my dad, um, he started. He, he's a big uh, sports guy. He loves watching all kinds of sports. Yeah. And uh, they started doing like the women's stuff in the Olympics before the men's stuff. Yeah. And it made sense because then you'd watch that and you'd be like, yeah, that's pretty good. And then you see the men's stuff, and be like, oh, it just gets better. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so it means it means that if you watch the men's stuff and then the women's stuff, you're not disappointed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I prefer watching the women's stuff. I don't like sport because I'm so straight. I like watching them prancing around. Anyway. Right. <laughs> um. Uh, if we move on to the next tab, uh, so um, this is this is actually this is uh, in the wrong. This is somebody uh, supporting the conversion bill. So this basically is 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 up for um, uh, consultation at the moment. If we move on to the next tab, um, so this is pointing out the the reality, or you know certainly some per somebody's perception of. Um, 
how conversion therapy and uh, the trans rights movement is uh, is erasing gays and erasing lesbians. So it's, it's making the parallels uh, and lesbophobia between 1973 uh, when there was conversion therapy and 2021 when uh, you know this ban on conversion therapy is ironically bringing through conversion therapy to convert more people to being trans. So yeah, I can I can see that. And I, I can see the the problems with this. There's an industry rapidly growing up around transitioning. In America, we've gone from one gender uh, transitioning clinic to, to over fifty in just a few years. This is all happening incredibly quickly. Uh, Therapy in Poland, that kind of growth isn't happening. Oh yeah, I don't think we need to hmm. look to Poland as an example of a, a stellar but, society. Fine, okay. Well, I don't want Italy. some guy in a frock with a big beard swinging a watering can full of incense to be no. deciding what I do with my dick. No, that's like. But it, but it's interesting that the massive growth in transgenderism only seems to appear appearing in certain countries. Yeah, yeah, and the, I mean, it's, it's where wokists have got the got the power, uh, and I, I don't think the Catholic Church should have the power either. I don't think anybody should have the power. I think people should, you know, should be allowed. We've got to have a, a libertarian society where people have, where the, people's power over other people is minimized as much as possible. But anyway, so this industry that's, that's grown up, so there's therapists and doctors, et cetera, they're making money from this. They've all got a vested interest in encouraging people to transition uh, so that they're pushing more and more vulnerable young people into the system. Uh, so starting puberty blockers uh, can, can begin what doctors call a treatment cascade. So data from European clinics suggests that the vast majority of those prescribed puberty blockers go on to take cross-hex hormones. These drugs are powerful and have powerful side effects. Puberty blockers can stunt growth and weaken bones. Uh, a recent case in Sweden documented a teenager with osteopenia. Uh, do you know what that is? No idea. A debilitating brittle bone disease. Osteopenia, I think it's to the dick. Uh, it debilitates your dick bone. Um, no, it's, uh, it's a it, 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 <laughs> It's not a real bone, actually. Uh, my mate broke his dick, though. Uh, he's having, having sex with a lassie, like slammed down his dick too much. He's a comedian. Um, Phil Nickel, great what, comedian. He made a laugh? But he broke, broke his dick and he said it was the most painful thing oh. uh, I can imagine. So, you know, when it's engorged and, and hard, then it can snap, you know, like, you know, he let you snap a courgette or something. Um, so Is and, it better? And cro he's better now. Right. <laughs> Cross-sex hormones produce irreversible change, including the growth of facial hair and a deep voice in women and the growth of breasts in men. Long-term use can affect fertility. Surgery to remove breasts from women who transition to be a man is permanent, as is surgery on the genitals, which also guarantees sterility. As the growing number of detransitioners shows, some of those who undergo such treatments come to regret them bitterly. Um, and the, yeah, this uh, you know the, the transitioning isn't based on rigorous peer-reviewed research. It can't be because the academic environment is so hostile to any examination of these issues. Questions are seen as criticisms, and uh, objective yeah. analysis is denounced as transphobic. Anyone raising objections is hounded from their job, like Kathleen Stock was. Same thing happens in the IQ departments. People who want to study IQ, they're just endlessly there's types of research they can't do. Yeah. Whether or not the truth is the truth doesn't matter. Right. I don't know what IQ is, but I'm just getting to the end of this. So I mean, yeah, don't don't get me wrong. I know that gender affirmation surgery is absolutely the right solution for some young people, but a lot of them are being rushed into a system and we don't have enough data at the moment. It hasn't been around long enough to know that if it's the right thing for everyone. The data that we do have suggests that it isn't uh, always the absolutely right thing for everyone. So, um, so yeah, uh, you know, in, in trans people, valid treatments for related mental health issues such as autism, dissociative identity disorder are being interpreted as conversion therapy. A GP is quoted as saying the way the bill is worded at the moment, I could end up in prison. Um, so the government's consultation is out at the moment. It closes on the 10th of December, closes in three days time. Um, and it, it's got the aim of passing a law before an international conference on gay and trans issues in London next June. So, uh, so yeah, there's there's the link. I don't know if we can put the link on the on the website or whatever to the uh, government consultation. But yeah, if you go to the ne next tab and then the next tab, uh, so this is the the, the open consultation, um, and you can you can go there and you can if you've got any yeah, if you want to raise any issues. There's links underneath the podcast. People can find brilliant. It. So people people can raise any issues, and I think. You know, it is something that needs to be needs to be examined. Otherwise, you know, in 10, 15, 20 years time, there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of people uh, unhappy and traumatized by the fact that they were sort of, you know, yeah. as vulnerable uh, children or or uh, teenagers, they were they were sort of rushed into yeah. this. I mean, we say in ten years time, we're already getting it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You remember there was that court case from that that 
chap or girl, I can't even remember uh, what they started as. And then they went through it and went back and went, hang on, I've been lied to. Yeah. Like, that was why I did that. Yeah. Because I was misled by the adults in the room. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, there, you know, sometimes there, there's so little um, so little oversight and so li little process between, like, there's the, the uh, kid in Ohio, uh, I think it was Ohio, who went to a gender transition clinic. And they, they prescribed him hormones on his first visit. And then I think his third visit, they, they made an appointment for surgery. And it's like, there surely has to be some sort of, you know, I don't know, just talking, discussing and finding out the full plethora of, you know, yes, what, what they actually believe and, and maybe just waiting a bit, you know, to see if it resolves by adolescence. I mean, I understand you want to... Uh, I, I suppose get, in America it's not as profitable. Well, you want to get the, the hormones into them before they go through uh, puberty because, you know, nobody wants to get a hand job of a transgender woman with big hands, you know. So I can see why <laughs> they want to get the hormones into them. But no, like, on, a, on a serious note, you know, it does stop the... the you know the, the the changes and then it'll be easier to pass as, right. as female if you you know you transition into female but i mean we're, we're seeing a lot of people um resolving to their biological gender and a lot of people detransitioning and a lot of people being unhappy and even even committing suicide and you know while it's the right solution for for a lot of people um it's not the right solution for everybody so you know people there should be there should be some sort of uh, you know due process and, and talking therapy before people are pushed into surgery and hormones should we end like that? Sorry, to, sorry if that makes me Hitler. <laughs> if you enjoyed that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site. We've got loads on there and it's all really, really good. For example, we have regular premium articles that discuss contemporary events and we have a, an audio track for our silver and gold tin members. And of course, we have our regular series on there. We've got Contemplations, which is Josh and whoever he wants to have talked to him about a particular topic. On this one, he's talking about Bo, uh, talking to Bo, sorry, about in-group preference. Moving on. Uh, Bo and myself also do the Epoch series, which says talking about history. This one's Belisarius, part three, because uh, Belisarius was a 6th century Byzantine general, and he had an amazing career and a tragic, a genuinely tragic end. And the, the myth of him is old blind Belisarius, baking on the streets of Rome, would have been better than what happened to him, but I won't spoil it. I'll let you figure out. Uh, I'll let you find out. And of course, uh, we do our regular book club as well. This week's or this month's, I don't know how often we do them actually, fairly regularly. It takes a while to read a book. But this is Callum doing John Stuart Mill's On Liberty, in which I rail against utilitarianism. I used to be a huge fan of John Stuart Mill, like five, ten years ago. And since then, I've really soured on utilitarianism. And so the framing of his arguments, I find kind of insufferable. He's not wrong in what he's arguing for, but it's the way he's doing it. But uh, anyway, we also do a bunch of premium podcasts, uh, things that are entertaining, we think, like the politics of Star Trek that I did with John, uh, talking about, well, is Star Trek a socialist paradise or not? It turns out it's not, but it's, you know, it's something different post-scarcity liberalism basically but that's a really good podcast and uh, we also have to put up things on the website that we can't actually put on youtube because youtube has editorial policies about things such as where all these heart attacks are coming from giant elephant in the room it's probably climate change don't worry about it uh, we also have fascinating interviews from really interesting people uh, such as this one uh, which is an activist called luke avery who's a christian but don't worry he's not bible thumping in this what he's doing is talking about the ancient wisdom in the biblical book of proverbs and it's very much daddish sort of stuff and i really enjoyed doing this one and uh, i think i'll have him back in hopefully to uh, do another one ecclesiastes or something and uh, hopefully we'll do another one soon and if you want to keep up with us you can follow us on getter.com i love the the phrase and getter getter doing something like that i don't know you're it's doing the, really well on there though aren't you? you've got like eleven thousand followers it's yeah, so come follow me on Getter, come follow yeah. you on Getter. Yeah. And, uh, and lotuses.com on Getter. Lotuses underscore com on there. Let's go check that out. And also the conference itself. So this is a conference yeah. being put on by uh the Getter guys. This is on the December the eighth. So update on this. The Getter conference has been postponed until further notice. We all let people know as soon as we have more information. Apparently it was postponed thanks to the global freakout in response to the Omicron variant. So sorry about that. So if you'd like to get access to all that premium content, you can subscribe at lotuseaters.com. Thank you and goodbye.